Lord, for he is holy, he is righteous, and he is king. Let our Lord bring our king. He's the ruler of everything. Let's lift his name on high. Come on, Zion, we praise our king.
give you the glory, Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. No matter what I see or how I feel, as long as I'm breathing, oh yes, I'm breathing, I'll bless the Lord. As long as I'm breathing, oh yes, I'm breathing, I'll bless the Lord. Can we bless the Lord? Send up your praises to the Lord. Said I will bless. And his praises No matter what As long as I'm breathing Said as long as I'm breathing Oh magnify Let us exalt
God bless you, APC family. Good to see you once again. Thank you for joining us for a Sunday message and all of you who are part of the greater new virtual APC family. We're glad to see you as well. Getting ready to get into this message, but absolutely hope you are preparing yourselves to join us on next Sunday. We're going to be celebrating my father, Bishop E. We're going to have an amazing time, a wonderful service. Also, the fourth Sunday, the following Sunday, the fourth Sunday, last Sunday of this month, our church anniversary. Want to see you there. All of the APC family that are willing and comfortable gathering will continue with CDC guidelines, will continue to be safe as we move through this season of grace. We'll continue to be sober and be, village, be, be vigilant and make sure we're taking care of ourselves. But I want to go ahead and get right into this word on today. My topic for today is normal is canceled. That's the theme that we've been talking about. Look at that. That's the theme that we've been talking about. Normal is canceled. And I want to show you today. I want to look at two particular passages of scripture and uh, to bring them together to make a point. We're going to talk about Peter and we're going to talk about Paul. But as we lead into our church anniversary, we're going to be celebrating 98 wonderful years that we've been right here at 114th and Vincennes in the Morgan Park neighborhood in Chicago. And the church, God's church, the church of God, the church of Jesus Christ, the bride of Christ, as is uh, called. The church is so significant to the community being here again, 98 years serving, serving God's people. Being willing, being dedicated, being committed through ups and downs, ins and outs, changes right now in the midst of a pandemic, a global pandemic, a global change, a global shift. All things are changing. So many churches all over the world are now in a place trying to just navigate some surviving, some thriving, doing the best we can to stay connected. Even though we have been uh, physically distant, we have been intentional about being socially and spiritually connected. I'll even take this time to go ahead and plug our amazing website, www.apcmorganpark.org. You can go to our website and keep up with everything that we're doing as a church, the church, the threshold to the kingdom. It's where you enter into the kingdom of God that Jesus talks about is where you understand you're taught spiritual principles and biblical truths about how to live and thrive in the kingdom. The church is significant and it seems as though I can hear very vividly in, in, in my own ears, um, in my mind, uh, the voice of Apostle R.D. Hinton, one of the fathers uh, who transitioned. Um, but I remember him very vividly saying, no more church as usual. No more church as usual. What do you do when the prophecy comes to pass? The prophecy is fulfilled. The prophecy has manifested, manifest. That's a buzzword right now. The manifestation of church not being the same. I've been in church 44 years. Again, this church has been here 98 years, but 44 years. I was born during the church picnic. I understand this culture. I understand this culture. I understand this community. I understand how we operate. I understand that all churches are in a place that we've never been before. And it's definitely a time that we understand things are not normal and normal is canceled. So many of us are in a rush to get back to, to the way things used to be and things will not return to the way they used to be. We are having to adapt and adopt new norms, establish new customs. And the challenge is some of it even right now may be temporary because we're still in a pandemic. But post pandemic, things will continue to change as things always do change over time. It's natural evolution. But what the church must do is the church must remain constant. The church must remain strong. The church must remain solid in its foundation, solid in its core 
and it must remain strong in serving all of God's people. So what I want to kind of talk to us about today is let's look at Peter and Paul. Let's look at two scriptures here today. Uh, we'll start with Matthew, the 16th chapter, uh, because I want to just look at sort of, if you would, two different views of church and what church should, could, would look like. But church is established in the book of Matthew, the concept of church that we know, that we use, the general uh, 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 colloquialism or the cliche of church, the general understanding, working knowledge of church, is established in Matthew, the 16th chapter, uh, verse 13. We're going to do a little Bible reading today. Now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the son of man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah and others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter replied, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona. It's an exclamation point. He gets excited. He says, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father who is in heaven. And I will tell you, you are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Now let's skip. I want you to do some homework. Your homework is going to be to read uh, those verses in between. Read verse 21 uh, through uh, verse 24. But verse 24 says, uh, I'm sorry, uh, verse 23. Verse 23 says, but he returned and said to Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. You are a hindrance to me. For you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. Matter of fact, let's just go back and read it together. From the time, verse 21, that Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Wait a minute. Peter's rebuking Jesus. He says, far be it from you, Lord. There's an exclamation point there. This shall never happen to you. But he returned to Peter and said, get thee behind me, Satan. Exclamation point. He's, he's, he's raising his voice. He says, you are a hindrance. For you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. I want us to look at something right here. Let's look at this. First thing in the text I want us to see on today is this. I believe that in order for the church to cancel normal, the body of Christ in general, faith communities at large worldwide, I believe the one thing, one of the first things we need to do is we need a new revelation of Jesus Christ. We need a different vision and version of Jesus. We, 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 we've come from a place where we knew Jesus as a bridge over troubled water, but now, how do we need to see Jesus in our present day context? How do we need to see Jesus work in our lives today? This is what happens with Peter. Now, remember, there are 12 disciples. Different ones of them had different responses. We don't even see in the text where we heard all of their responses. But Jesus magnifies or uplifts Peter's response. And he says, Peter, you're blessed because you've got a deeper Revelation. You, you've walked with me. You're one of the three that's been with me and seen some things. I've had some different conversations with you. So you have a different relationship with me, which provides a different revelation. The church at large, we must understand that 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 the revelation that God gives us comes through relationship. When we get back to being focused on personal, intimate relationship more than we are focused on denominational operations, more than we're focused on polity and bureaucracy, 
more than we're focused on, 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 on uh, 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 going through our spiritual calisthenics, our religious uh, rigmarole, just going through the motions, doing rituals with no, uh, uh, no intention, no real spirit behind it, no real intentionality behind it. Just coming to church to shout and dance and have a good times to anesthetize ourselves from a difficult reality. And I know we're in a challenging time right now. This pandemic has 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 done so much to so many people. But I believe that this is especially a time that God has allowed. Watch this. God has allowed this pandemic to take place so that we can get to know God in a different way. So Peter highlights that the church is established through a solid revelation. We know this revelation is solid because Peter, uh, Jesus even tells Peter later on, Peter, you're going to deny me. Peter says, no, I'm not. But Jesus says, I've already established you. I've already I know because I see your future that you're going to mature to a place where you're going to be solid and dependable. So then Jesus tells him later on, Peter, feed my sheep. Peter, do if you love me, feed my sheep. He knew that Peter would mature to a place where he could be depended upon. I want you to know that's the kind of revelation that comes through relationship. The intimacy of relationship, it breeds experience. This is what Peter has, an experience based on this relationship with Jesus Christ. Now, Paul comes on the scene. Paul's relationship is established through an experience. Look at the Damascus Road. Do your homework. Go to the book of Acts. Check out the story. Paul gets knocked off of the horse. Bright light shines. Jesus shows up to have a conversation with Paul. Rebuke takes place. Right here we see revelation. We see relationship. We see rebuke. The rebuke Paul. Saul rather. Saul. Why do you kick against the pricks? After that, there's also another level of revelation that takes place. Illumination, if you will, tells Saul, go down to the house of Ananias and Sapphira. Hands will be laid on you. He received the Holy Spirit. The scales fall from his eyes. He's able to see now. He has a new vision and version of Jesus, the Christ, who has called him into relationship and now gives him a mission to go out and deliver this good news. So we see Peter establishes the church. Peter's church is a little more rigid, a little more denominationally structured and driven, a little more focused on the rituals, uh, uh, a little more focused on the law. But then Paul comes and says, Paul says, well, I I've got a message to a different people that, that they aren't going to be ready to accept and adopt a new cultural custom says, I've got to go and introduce church in an abnormal way. But Paul knew, Paul knew, Paul knew because he was a highborn Hebrew. Paul knew because he was one even when he used to uh, uh, persecute the Christians and actually mur what was, one, was a murderer of the Christians. But Paul knew the ways, he knew the normal ways of salvation. But he also now knows this ultimate sacrifice that has been made, Jesus the Christ. And so we see Paul here saying in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, he says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us this ministry of reconciliation that is in Christ. God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. God making God's appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ. Be reconciled to God for our sake. 
he made him to be sin who knew no sin so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Well, I'm getting ready to close, but I believe that that is the message or the lesson rather that God would have us to take from this message on today. And that is the ministry that God has given the church, the ministry of revelation, the ministry to build relationships, the ministry also to rebuke, but to rebuke in grace, to rebuke considering yourself, to also understand that God has given us the ministry of reconciliation to bring relationships together. That's what I believe the church should be doing. While it may be a challenge for us to physically gather, it's more than just coming to a building to express ourselves with our brothers and our sisters, but it's now time for us to do what Jesus actually intended, and that's be a community that goes into the world that makes disciples, that give to God's calls, that serve God's community, and love God's creation. We've been doing that for 98 years, and this road to 100, we're committed to continue to do these things, to serve the body of Christ and to serve the world. In order to do that, the body of Christ, APC Morgan Park, right here on the south side of Chicago, we will continue in worship. We will continue into, in discipleship, even digital, discipleship. We will continue in spiritual disciplines. We will continue in the fellowship, the service of the body of Christ. We will continue in evangelism, even digital evangelism. As a matter of fact, you can still share. You can still tag. You can still invite somebody to come be a part of this ministry. Connect with us virtually. Go to our website, www.apcmorganpark.org. Go to our Facebook page, leave a message for us, hit the inbox, or go to the Instagram page, apcmorganpark.org. Leave a message, we'll get back with you. We want to connect with you to let you know that there is a faith community that will help you to continue to be a productive citizen in the kingdom and in society. I'm Bill Ellis. I love everybody. I'll see you next time.
APC Morgan Park would like to thank you for being a part of our worship experience today. We pray that the message will continue to help you be productive citizens in the kingdom and in society. For more information, please contact the church at 773-881-6900 or the World Wide Web at apcmorganpark.org.